Check, check. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. But check. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Hello there. How's it going, everybody? My name's Peter. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. Uh, Maddie, I know this morning you were kind of complaining that I took a little long to park. So today, went ahead and came out with a presentation for you. And I think you're gonna like it. This is what goes through my head every time I have to park our vehicle. Because common misconception is that, oh, I'm just wasting time. It's a complicated process choosing where to safely park your vehicle. And thank you, Holly, for paying attention to this presentation. Okay. All right, so here we go. How to find a good parking spot presented by your boy Cleeter. All right, four categories. You got to go in order on these. If you get out of order, you could end up in a bad parking spot. Understand your priorities, type of parking lot, identifying hazards, and execution. Here we go. All right, first thing we need to understand, what kind of car are we driving? You know what I mean? Are we in the C7? We can't get a door ding on that puppy. Valid. That'd be bad. Yeah. Or are we in Leroy? What are they going to door ding? There's I mean, nothing to door ding. Yeah. Or, you know, in the blazer, things a piece of junk. You end up <laughs> putting a door ding in that. Actually, it probably wouldn't be good. Sam would be disappointed. So you really got to understand what you're driving. Maddie, you drive a Tahoe, you need to take care of that puppy. Yep. You need to listen to these rules, okay? You're in a Crown Vic, park wherever, it doesn't matter. So once you understand what you're driving, what your priorities are, uh, that's, that's just a big thing. So here we go. Do we need to protect this car to the max? I don't know, C7 probably. Understand, don't let your wife or girlfriend tell you where to park because at the end of the day, if you park somewhere shitty and your car gets damaged, who does it fall back on? The driver, the owner of the vehicle. Okay, do not let your wife convince you where to park because it could backfire, okay? It could backfire. Remember, weak men park like shit, okay? That's just truth right there. I see a bad parking job, I'm like, that guy's an idiot, okay? Right off the bat, no hesitation on that. All right, so here we go. Number two, we got types of parking lots here. I went ahead and pulled up a photo of a Walmart. These can be good and bad because more than often, there's a more than, you know, normal, there's a lot of open spots, big parking lot, a lot of room. You go to your to Texas Roadhouse in Florida on a Saturday night, this is what it's gonna look like. That's when things get complicated, okay? But also I wanna say that you gotta keep in mind, if you park in an open parking lot, you also leave the option for people to park next to you. And that comes with a whole different set of risks. So if you're gonna park in an open parking lot, I suggest going really far. So far that no one's gonna be a jerk and park next to you. If you're just right here in kind of the like outer zone, you could park there and someone just come park right next to you because it's really not that much further than if they were to park in here. So if you're going for a wide open spot, you need to go out here. You need to go the extra mile. That's important, okay? But let's move on because we're talking about parking lots like this. This is where it gets dicey. This is where you risk it all. Okay. What are we working with? Is this a restaurant or a store? Okay, one, re one thing I recommend if you're at a restaurant you're gonna to wanna to ask for a table near a window. And you're gonna to wanna to park your car in a spot where you could maybe see it, because then you can keep an eye on it. And if someone bumps into it, whatever, you can watch what's going on. Also, you can look at it. Obviously, looking at cars is awesome, so it's nice to be able to look at it. But if you're at a shopping center, that's what I'm saying, that's when you go for the spot that's the safest, because you're probably not gonna be able to see your car. That's just, that's the facts. Um, is it too risky? You know, sometimes you got to make the decision. Is it that risky that I'm willing to walk half mile, full mile to park my car safely? Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. I mean, 
parallel parking situations, listen, I'm walking to find another spot because I don't want someone backing into my car. That's just that's how it's got to be. Find another parking lot, guys. Don't cheap out of this. Are you following, Maddie? Is this all good? Yeah, I'm taking it all in. Okay, cool. Um, but sometimes you got to sort through the chaos and find a good spot. And that's why we're going to move on to the next section here. All right, so here's the deal. You're going to want to look for a glory spot. That's what I'm talking about. You got two curbs on either side. This spot right here, this is a meme that I made back in 2015 when I worked for 1320 Video. I don't remember exactly where it was, but I took this photo, okay? <laughs> this is a glorious spot, okay? There's a couple issues I see with it, just this tree mainly, and uh, the potential for sprinklers in the <laughs> shrubbery. Oh my okay, that's something you gotta be cautious of. We'll talk about that later, but if you can find a spot next to a curb, that's great. That eliminates the fact of one person being able to park next to your car. It takes a little bit less risk out of the situation. If you can find a double curb where you're boxed in, that's ideal. Then you only risk damage from the front. Um, wide open spots, we already talked about that. There's also the potential for parking next to a car guy. You see another car guy in the parking lot, you know he's not going to door name you, right? He cares about his car too much to door name you. So we got a little shot of Leroy and Ruby next to each other because... If I get the chance to park next to someone else who's a car enthusiast, I'm taking that shot every single time, okay? All right, next slide. This is huge. Skiff, I need you to dial in right now. This is big. Identifying hazards. <sighs> Risky stuff. I know, Skiff. I know you're stressed. Okay. Big one here, a lot of people don't think they're like, oh, I got a great spot. No, you don't. You're parked under an oak tree, bud. Okay, you're gonna have all kinds of tree sheddings on your vehicle. I have a question. What? What if I want shade because I don't have a well-tinted vehicle? No. no, you have a well-tinted vehicle. Well, what if I didn't? You got, that's when you go back to step one. What kind of car are we driving? Uh -huh. Is it worth parking it under a tree? All right. For shade. I have gotten ants in my car before. Yeah, from trees, right? <laughs> They're a problem. I had okay? a bomb the whole time. Very thing. commonly uh, misstep here. You gotta watch out for trees. A lot of things can fall. Not only that, there's squirrels in them. And squirrels <laughs> drop a lot of stuff. Birds land in them, poop on your vehicle. These are all things you can avoid by not parking under a freaking tree. Okay? All Don't right. be an idiot. Okay, next car, I went ahead and pulled up a photo of a Nissan Altima because this is the riskiest vehicle you can possibly park next to. <laughs> Top of the charts, do not park next to Nissan Altimas, okay? <sighs> I'm not saying every Nissan Altima driver is reckless, but majority of them could care less about their vehicle. These are simply tanks of the road. <laughs> Have you ever seen an Altima with both the bumper covers on it at one time? Never. They're always either missing a bumper cover, have some sort of structural damage somewhere on the car. It could be anywhere. There could be middle of the car. There could just be complete chaos happening. I don't know what it is about people in Altimas, but they destroy them and they're willing to destroy your car too. It doesn't matter how good your spot is sometimes, but if you can get a good spot and avoid Nissan Altimas at all costs, you'll be good. Uh, another hazard here is minivans. I just want to bring this up. There's a couple good things about them. The doors slide open. You see that? So you have a little bit less risk of a door ding from a backseat passenger. However, children, you might risk some fingerprints, okay? But that's okay. You get a well-waxed car, and they really won't stick. Okay, but that's just, so sometimes it's kind of, minivans aren't that bad because I'd rather have some fingerprints than a door ding. So that's something to think about. All right, so up next we have some more hazards. These are bad news. Bad news, especially in Florida where they use a lot of well water for sprinklers. That may be everywhere, but holy Toledo. You park next to a sprinkler in Florida, you're getting hard water spots, bud and they're not coming off. You're gonna need a treatment plan from Sam. 
<laughs> You're gonna need something to repair. I mean, we're talking etched clear coat from these hard water spots. They are bad. C7's got some on its window right now. Because my parents' sprinklers. Um, shopping carts, that's an obvious one. That's for noobs. You gotta watch out for those suckers. Nissan Altima driver pulls up, slams their cart into your car, gets in, door dings you, pulls out. So just watch out for those. Um, another thing I like to be cautious of is when you're parking in a, a parking lot, you might like parking next to these crosswalk things. You know, like say this thing goes down the parking lot and then it turns and it goes in between a couple of cars. Real common at the airport. Um, you know, you think, oh, I got a gap on this side of the car. No one can park here. Yeah, that's great. But you're at the airport and you got a bunch of idiots walking by with their luggage and they don't care. They will scrape the side of your vehicle with no regard. They'll scrape the entire side of the vehicle. So really be cautious of these. If you're at the edge of the parking lot where they're not going to get used, low traffic situation, no problem. High traffic, you want to stay away from those. Okay, those are... Those are some hazards. All right, and then last but not least, we have execution. This is, this is big, right? So now you've weighed in all of your options. You've chosen a spot. Let's talk about parking that sucker. Park that sucker like you mean it, okay? Here we got an example. We got Leroy on Rocky Mountain Race Week parked up, okay? Couple things you're gonna see. Wheel straight. Don't ever park your car and leave the wheels turned. You look like an idiot, okay? You pull in, even if you pull in straight, straighten your wheels, okay? This isn't elementary. You're a licensed driver. <laughs> Wheel straight, parallel with the lines, okay? See that? Cars perfectly parallel with the lines. Now I'll admit, this isn't my best parking job, but this is one that I could find. I'm a little over on that side, but I had to swing a trailer around the island, so. That's pretty good, though, because he left me plenty of room. Good explanation. Um, this one's important. You drive a low car like the C7, Maddie, you know the deal. We got to watch our doors on the curbs. All okay, the you time. swing that door open. There could be a high curb. Catch the bottom of that door. You're done. Yep. And lastly, you need to warn your wife slash girlfriend of potential hazards, okay? We could have a tailwind that could rip that door wide open. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Rip the hinges off that sucker. Bend them. You do not want that to happen. Um, not only that, rain, okay? If you don't get your wife or girlfriend prepared to go inside. Oh, my gosh. Maddie knows the deal. She can take forever. They'll leave the door open in the rain while they gather all their junk. I mean, they got a lot of stuff stuffed in the footwell of the passenger seat. They're gathering all their stuff. Doors wide open. The freaking window switches are a swimming pool. Okay. I personally you gotta be, feel attacked. Yeah, you should feel attacked. <laughs> Maddie's, I mean, it could be a hurricane and she's over there doodle, doodle bopping, <laughs> taking all kinds of time, doors soaked, okay? So, oh my gosh. and as long as you guys follow these simple steps and rules in your everyday life, I personally guarantee you, less body damage, less door dings, less scratches, and most importantly, a damn good parking job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Skip, what do you think? Skip. Questions? Concerns? All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, we will see you later.